and I think we're live. Hi, everyone. I am here with Randy, who has been popping up on YouTube quite a bit uh, as well. Um, Randy, should we put a link to to some of the other places that you've been uh, talking uh, as well in, in the description for this video? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Right. Um, so, Randy, you're a competitive U.S. player. Uh, and where are you located in the U.S.? So I'm in middle Georgia in the middle of nowhere. So yeah. I usually have to travel a couple hours to get in a game. Yeah. Which is fairly normal for Americans, I guess. Um, yeah. And uh, and how long have you been playing the game here? Uh, probably five years. Yeah. So an, an experienced veteran of uh, of several uh, tournaments as well. And Randy and me, we've been chatting quite a lot back and forth. We even did a TTS game, which we're halfway through, and then my computer died. Um, <laughs> um, because both me and Randy in version two were playing Gurkha assault lists. Yeah. So we've been chatting quite a lot about how to do that, and and so um, and you sent me a, an important question, I think, that can really guide us into version three here. Um, and your question was what, Randy? Yeah, so since the British, they've lost the free observer, they have to pay for it now. And in place of that, they give the British two airstrikes, um, or not airstrikes, but artillery strikes. Yeah. So is that worth spending 100 points on? Or actually, 110, because if you're going to do that, you need an extra guy so you don't get you sniped. You potentially need an extra guy, yeah. Yeah. Um, but or Maybe even two. Yeah, yeah, because small team's gone, so why not have an, another one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but for the kind of points you're spending, you could have a couple of light howitzers uh, that you could pay for, and those things are shooting every turn. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. And they could do a lot more damage than the, the strikes. Yeah. So here we see the trade off that most of us competitive players, just for you guys at home, most of us competitive players do this. Like, this is point for value that we're talking here, right? We're talking about if I pay this for this ability, is that this worth the same as that that I can get for the same points? And that's a good point here, because the first thing I, I noticed when I saw that is, well, it's, it's sort of the same as getting the free observer, because you're basically buying one observer and getting one for free, because you can shoot them twice, right? It, it's more or less the same. But, and then the sniper thing uh, got out, and, and we all knew that snipers are going to be more deadly. Not a problem for me, because I'm really good at protecting my observers. So I was still like, oh, I can still make that work. But the question is, is it going to be worth it? And and that is a good question. Because because I don't think we know yet um, if if British armies are going to be assault armies. We don't know the effect for me, at least. Uh, I don't know about you, but we can talk a little bit about that. The way I used my observer was to put down an artillery barrage or encourage my enemy to spread out and then use the barrage to to try and pin them down so I could charge. Um, that was that was the standard operation procedure, at least for, for that. And with the changes to assault rules, am I going to do that as much? I don't know. What about you? What, how do you feel? Yeah, about especially if they're in cover, you're not going to want to do that. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah. Um, the, mostly it's going to make them spread out, like you say, and, and then you can attack the weaker side whichever way they go mm. now one thing that would make the observer a little better is the super heavy because yeah. that's a generic and so you're paying an extra 50 points but that's spread out into two observers now two strikes so yep. maybe that's a little better if you want to go that route assuming two things one that the super heavy observer gets that as well uh, yeah. that the double strike and that it will still be the same in version three none of those are known as of yet but let's assume that they just take the unit and transfer it over and yeah, yeah. that super heavy would be very very deadly if shooting twice and i definitely think that would be worth paying the points for yeah I've actually the used the one. Yeah, sorry. 
and and it doesn't well a lot of times you'll you'll get a, a hit on infantry one mm. inch HD, and you'll kill a couple guys um if you can catch vehicles in it that's great that's where you really yeah. want you want to catch yeah. vehicles in it. yeah because i have rolled some fives when yeah I and that that happened to me at the spanish nationals <laughs> where russell uh, right he just at absolutely tore the heart out of my army with his uh, naval bombardment. Oh, you had so, a naval? Wow. Yeah. 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 So th that, that, it really can happen. I think we need to divide this discussion, though, into two parts. Like, one part is, is it worth it? Is this going to kill the same as two light howitzers? And I don't think it ever will. Yeah. I don't think it did in version two either. Um, yeah. So as such, if, if, if you're going to build something where you want it to kill stuff, I think you need to go with the howitzers. If you want something where you would encourage the enemy to spread out, we don't know if the Brits get access to a multi-launcher or anything that has that effect. Hmm. It might still be interesting, though, just to have that effect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and uh, so... I've often, like in a game where you, you have so many dice, you can't go over like 16 dice. Yeah. I've toyed with not even taking the free observer because it's like I'm spending a dice that I really need for something else. Yeah. What well, does is put pins out. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. And do you remember, I can't remember which of the new platoons you can take an observer in. Is that the rifle platoon or is it a, one of the others? So there's a rifle platoon, and I think there's, is it the engineers or the recce platoon, maybe? Okay. I thought there was two platoons that you could take it in. Yeah. Okay. Would it even be worth taking doubles? Hmm. Four wow. Then. <laughs> My mind just blew there. Worth double. Like, imagine having two of those. It's 200 points, yeah. but it's four shots. That's a lot of pins you're putting out. And you're covering the whole board. Yeah, you are. There's no place to hide. There's no place to hide. It, yeah, you're pretty likely that one of them will be delayed and one of them might scatter off the board or whatever. But that is a lot of pins. Yeah. So I think um, conclusion-wise here, Randy, what would you be, be your conclusion for, for this right now? Well, honestly, I... I because you're having to take more platoons now and you're yep. really spending more points for stuff like officers you are. i probably wouldn't take it i would i would build up my artillery platoon uh to where it's 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 a, almost like a barrage in its own mm. uh, four light howitzers yeah yeah for me as well i don't think i'm going to take it but i do see the potential of building some lists that can really lean into that like i just, i see a, a new army build sort of type where you have multiple observers and just lean into just pinning out your opponent for a whole game um so that not something i would want to do and um and and i'm definitely not sure that i would need it for an assault list going forward um so yeah so I guess the conclusion here is we'll play around with it. We'll see what other people do, but maybe not for us. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking I'll probably. And I just built uh, a super heavy gun. Uh, it's a 255 mm. millimeter, so I could play nice. my super heavy observer. Nice. So it's probably going to sit on the shelf now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What else are you building right now in anticipation of, of version 3? So, yeah, and I'm waiting to see what the costs are. Uh, and I don't and think everyone is waiting for that one. Yeah. Yeah. So the C-15 TA armored transport. Yeah. Uh, because armored transports are going to be much better now. And soft skins are going to be so, terrible. Yeah. And cheaper as well. Yeah. So, and I've used that armored transport for like uh, a squad of commandos or, or an engineer squad. Yep. So it doesn't get killed trying to run it up and uh, attack something. But now maybe it's just a good all-around transport. Right. I'm still hesitant of, about uh, leaning into transport, mostly because of open top. that I don't know what open top is going to do yet. Um, but if it's 
like version two, I think open, even like open top transports, perfectly worth it. I think um, unless they nerf that. What about the LVT? Yeah, the yeah. LVT is is definitely getting good. Uh, it's in, in, Replace yeah. those mediums with heavies, and now they got forty eight inch range, and they got plus one penetration all the way out. Yeah. But less shots, of course. But less I shots. mean, that 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 LVT is going to be able to split fire so many ways uh, now. Like a four way split, and and do the enemy go down for one or two shots? Maybe not. And auto cannons are getting much better. Yeah, because plus two all the way yeah. out. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, so the LVT is definitely staying in collection. I might even get me a few more, but <laughs> I've already we shall see about the rest. The points cost has dropped about 20 points on the LVT. Yeah, I've seen that. Okay. Yeah. I haven't seen it yet, but I like that. That that yeah. makes it even more playable for someone yeah. like us who've played it. Because, like, I've always said that the LVT, not for a beginning player. It's not something you can just plonk on a table and, and expect to win because it dies so, so often. easily. <laughs> so yeah. easy to kill. It, it took me a while to, to keep yeah. them getting killed. It did. Yeah, it does. Doesn't it? And it, I, I felt like when I, when I started playing around with it, I was like, yeah, I, I, I'm going to build this. I'm going to run it just because I know I can put 30 guys inside it. So that was really cool, right? But I don't think it's really, really good. And then I, I felt like, well, maybe it can be good, but I just, I need to get better. And that sort of over a lot of games happened. Did you experience the same thing? Yeah, it's a bullet magnet. As soon as it gets on the table, if you've got guys in it, everything yeah. shoots at it. Everything so, does, yeah. Keep it at range. Keep it out of at least rifle range. You know, yeah. at least if you're only getting hit by machine guns. You, yeah, you're not well, you take much. the pins. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I put officers in them, too, so to run the guns. Yeah. And then that gives me a little bit of a, a morale boost. So if I'm pinned, it helps me overcome yeah. that. Yeah. I do so. I do so. Do so too. Um, and now with the the availability in version three of of a lot more three man small teams things, I think mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of crew that I can just stuff in the LVT and, yeah. and see what happens. <laughs> right, Randy. Thank you so much for popping yes. on and talking uh, Brits in in version three. Good deal. <laughs> right. I will talk to you again. All right, Cheerio, everyone. Cheers. Thank you all for tuning in. And we'll talk to you. Cheers.